Okay, this is the first video for Chapter 10 in the Microsoft Excel 2013 Comprehensive Textbook, and I'm on page 622. Um, before I start on the stuff in Chapter 10, a um, couple of things I want to say about Chapter 10. Um, first of all, uh, this is probably something that you are never going to do. Um, they have you going in in this chapter and um, writing uh, computer programming code and uh, you're not going to be writing computer programming code on your own uh, they uh, they do show you how to do a sim some simple macros uh, which is basically just recording keystrokes um, that is something useful um, writing visual basic code is something you're not going to do because you'd have to take a whole class in computer programming in order to learn how to do it. Uh, but we will go through it. Uh, the good news is that uh, I do not test you over this, uh, but there will be one homework assignment over it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we want to open up the Waterfront Studios data, and I've already opened that. Um, and uh, we want to maximize it. It's already been maximized, and we want to save it with the name Waterfront Studio Artists and just so I know that this is a file that I have modified uh, I'm also going to put um, my name on the end of it and go ahead and hit enter or click on save and now at the top of page 624 and we want to uh, click on the convert artist data sheet so make that the active one and click review on the ribbon to display the review tab here's our review tab right up here and we have an unprotect sheet button and uh, this has been protected so we're going to click on this and we so basically you can lock a sheet and keep other people from modifying it um, basically your password protecting a worksheet uh, and you can't get into change it unless you know what the password is the password in this case is ART with a capital A 15T5 and click OK and if I type that correctly should unprotect this. And I'm just going to have to delete key here, and it deletes, and then we hit escape to. Oops, I can't do escape on that one. I have to undo or do a control Z. So there we go. Okay, now we're going to uh, record some macros. Uh, if you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again, um, it might be worth your time to stop and record a macro to do that. Um, now, the first thing we want to do is we want to make the developer tab visible. This is probably not visible on your computer because it's not visible by default. I have it here because I actually use it once in a while, but most people probably don't need it. Uh, so the way to make it visible is to go to um, options here. And um, we want to customize the ribbon. And over here on the right side, you'll see all the main tabs. And this checkbox is probably turned off on your computer. Uh, if it is, uh, just click on it to turn it on. And then click on OK. And when you return, the Developer tab should be visible up here on the top. And now let's flip over to page 626. And um, we want to make this the Active tab. So click on the Developer tab. and click the macro security button right here there's another thing we have to do and um, we want to enable all macros and it says not recommended um, and that's true uh, in general you don't want to have that on uh, but we're going to leave it on for the stuff we're doing in chapter 10 uh, click the OK button click the file tab and we're going to save as and we're going to do the same folder and we will 
we'll give it the same name, but there's another option here. Uh, if you want to store macros, which are basically programs that are embedded in your spreadsheet, um, it will not let you save it in an ordinary XLSX file. Uh, you have to say that it is an XLSM file and then you can click on save and now we're at the bottom of page 627 and we want to insert a blank column to the left of column A here and we want to resize the width to 21 and uh, click in A1 and what we're going to do here is we're going to change the case of some of these uh, some of the text that we've got here and uh, there's a built-in function called proper and if you type the first few letters if you spell it right it will come up here and do a left parenthesis and then we want B1 and then we want to flip over to page 628 and close the parenthesis and hit enter and it will convert that name to proper name case which is capitalizing the first letter and leaving the rest of them in the lower case. We want to copy this formula all the way down here and now, the names are usually easier to read if they're in proper case like this instead of all in caps. Uh, then we want four blank columns to the right of column B to prepare for adding data. So to the right of column B, let's select one, two, three, four columns. You can do this. If you select four and you do a right click and you do an insert, you'll get four. So there we go. And um, now we are going to the top of page 629 and we want to go to the developer tab which we are already on and there is a button here labeled use relative references and I think that's probably what you want most of the time when you're doing this kind of stuff uh, then we want to sell A2 which is right here And some of these names are last name, comma, first name. The other ones are first name, last name with no comma. So if there's no comma in here, you can tell that they're first name, last name. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, try to make these all look the same. Um, so we want to record what we're going to do here. See, I want to be able to do this here and here and here and here and where else? Here. Every place where I've got a first name followed by a last name. So we are now going to start recording I'm going to record what I do here for one person and then I'm just going to redo it over and over and over again for all of these other people so I want to record a macro and I need to give a name for it and uh, we'll call this first name you cannot put spaces in a macro name and uh, the shortcut key is going to be control F lowercase f and we want to store it in this workbook and there's a description we can type in and actually that's probably a good idea to document it so we'll go ahead and type that in okay so that's our documentation and then we want to click the OK button and everything we do now is going to be recorded So we want to go to the Home tab. I'm on the bottom of page 630 now, item number 3. And I want to do the right arrow key twice. So now I'm in C2. And then I'm going to put a formula in here that says equals LEN, which is the length function, and a left parenthesis. And I want the length of this. and close the parenthesis and hit the right arrow key to go to cell D2 and we put another formula here we're going to look for the blank in the name so we're going to do a search 
function. Uh, if you ever need to manipulate text, uh, it's actually pretty easy to do. There's a whole collection of text functions that are built in. Um, and we have to the find it's asking us for the find text which is what we want to find and what we want to find is a space so do quotation marks space quotation marks and um, then we want to type a comma and then we want to find something in to find that space in a2 And then we want to close the parenthesis here and hit the right arrow to move to the next sheet. And the first space is in location 7. And if you count the characters in Amelia, Amelia has six letters. The space is in column 7. And now we're in E2. We're on number 5 on page 631. And I want to... Um, do uh, equals right the right function will give you the rightmost characters and uh, in, a, in a text of the text that's in a cell and I want to go to A2 and the number of characters I want is C2 minus D2 okay which is the length minus uh, where that first space is and then close the parenthesis and hit the right arrow and what that did for us is it picked off the last name and uh, now uh, let me see so that's in E2 and now we want to go to the top of page 632 and we want to do a I guess we need to stay on that so we want to do a control C to copy that and what we're going to do is we're going to we get rid of the formula right off the bat here we're going to we're going to go to our um, paste option here and we're going to paste in the value so it'll replace the formula with the word Ackerman and so go ahead and do values and now we're going to hit the right arrow key we're going to go to uh, F2 and we're going to put another formula here we're going to put equals left which will pick off the leftmost characters in some text and the text I want to look at is A2 and I want D2 minus 1 so this will give me the leftmost six characters D2 has a 7 in it if I subtract 1 I'll get six characters and close the parenthesis and hit uh, the right arrow key I guess again and then go back here to Amelia and we're going to do the same thing here uh, we're going to do a control C to copy it or you can just click on the copy button here and then what we're going to do is going to paste the value right on top of it and now when I click on this cell you see that Amelia is what's there when I click on this one you see Ackerman is what's there and um, that's number eight on the top of page 633 and now I want to hit the home key to go back to A2 here and I want to hit escape to get rid of the dancing line over here in column F and I want to make sure I'm on the developer tab again and I want to stop recording and that ends my macro it's easy to forget to do that stop recording thing at the end in which case you'll end up recording a whole lot more stuff than you intended to and we're now at the top of page 634 but we've been going over 14 minutes now so we'll stop this and we'll continue on page 634 with video number two